First Alert meteorologist Darren Peck joins us with a closer look at the science behind what we just experienced. The images were so impressive from yesterday. Just a little more context to what happened. And Sarah, I, I've said this several times in the newscast. He texted me. The video you shot yesterday on the Embarcadero yeah. of the wind and more importantly, the waves. Yeah. I just want to start with that. If we can just show what that looked like. So Sarah's driving into work yesterday. Man, look at that. I've never seen that before. And there are people in the comments like this happens every day in Chicago. And I'm like, well, we're in San Francisco. Exactly. And speaking about happening every day, I don't know that I've ever seen wait. Look out. It's not so much the surge because yeah. we can get high tide where the water comes up right. onto the Embarcadero. That's not what stands out here. It's it's that it goes through video. It's the height of the winds and the waves out there. Whew, look at that. That's what stood out. And it didn't just catch our eye. It actually also caught the eye of the engineer director Deputy deputy for the city of San Francisco. This was his impression after seeing those waves. Barges slamming into the bridge. I would have to say the winds were of a historic nature. I've, I've never seen the wind get kicked up so, so bad. 70 mile an hour gusts sustained out. It was a long fetch going out over the water. Here's how that happened. We were right in the center of this thing. That's yesterday on the satellite imagery, taking us back to two in the afternoon. That's a pretty impressive satellite imagery on its own. But we were seeing this in the forecast models about a day and a half before it got here, right there. We showed this on Sunday night. That's just wind, and you can see it getting wrapped around the center of the storm. What happened when that came on shore Tuesday at three in the afternoon, you've got the center of the low here. Look at the shades of deep purple. This storm actually was able to develop something called a sting jet, meaning all that energy in the upper levels of the atmosphere because of the, the, the rapidness with which this developed, it was pretty much a bomb cyclone, which is one of those storms that drops 24 millibars in 24 hours. That term sounds impressive and does great on social media. But what was the most impactful part of this was the sting jet that developed on the southern edge of this as the storm came in. That band of purple that got pulled right across the peninsula of the city and the bay, that's where we got most of our damage. Unfortunately, we're reporting on five fatalities from this storm. All five of them were caused by downed trees. And it's just one other quick aspect to this. It wasn't just the storm yesterday that was responsible for that. We forget this. It was the three years of intense drought which killed historic numbers of trees statewide. And here in the Bay, on top of that, we also had um, pathogens in our local um, eucalyptus and oak trees, which killed a lot more of them. There was so much talk about this over the previous years. That's what set the stage. 70 mile an hour winds, like we saw from the waves from Sarah's video, that would have been impressive enough. But this was a compounded event yesterday, and half of the responsibility in terms of those fatalities has to go to the drought beforehand. And I don't think a lot of us think about it in those terms.